In today's Leeds news, more Adams links, Leeds interested in Brandon Williams, Rutter loan options, misunderstood Paveda, Leeds idea Ghana, and Creswell signs. Hey folks, Jay here on Wednesday, the, <laughs> the 2nd of August. I'm having a nightmare today, I'm sorry. The video's late getting out as well because I was away last night and then when I got home, the pair went, so it's been a bit of a love trying to find a way of getting this out so here we are also just want to say real quick we have um have a, a partnership or a temporary partnership with tough sport and um, who are helping with this this is the 1958-59 Leeds united original shirt made by tufts you can see it on the the, the logo there um, and we will be doing a discount code for anyone who watches this channel so um i will put more detail in the video tomorrow when i've got more time to do that but we that will be ongoing just a discount code that i'll get for everybody as well so um if you want to go buy some tops, it's a beautiful shirt, by the way, and it fits fantastically. So there you go. Uh, not a QVC uh, shopping channel. I know plugged, about, yeah, plugged a book yesterday, but this is for everyone who watches this channel as a discount if you're interested. So uh, let's crack on with the news. And we'll start off with Tyler Adams. And according to the Daily Mail, Aston Villa are prepared to activate the release clause of Tyler Adams. Slightly different situation than has been mentioned with Chelsea because according to the, the Mail, Adams' release clause is 25 million, which was rumored earlier in the window and not the 20 million that was mentioned over the course of the weekend. The report also states that Chelsea are keeping an eye on the situation as well. But it, the wording of it is interesting. It says that Aston Villa are waiting to hear from the player before they move forward with a formal bid to Leeds, which would be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Uh, I said it yesterday, it's expected that Adams will leave the club. There is now starting to be increasing Premier League interest as the Premier League clubs come back to England from the pre-season tours. And that is one that is going to pick up some pace, I would imagine, in the next week or so. I'd be shocked when the window closes, Tyler Adams is still a Legion United player, but you never know. We could get a nice shock this summer. Wouldn't be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, moving on, and let's talk about potential incomings. And according to Miguel Delaney from The Independent in Ireland, he is claiming that Leeds are interested in Manchester United left-back Brandon Williams. Uh, Williams is, has worked with Daniel Farke before at Norwich. He played 26 games for Farke at Norwich um, and is described as a, a tough tackling, hard-working player. He has had some off-the-field issues. There's a lot of people who won't like the fact that he's a Manchester United fan. But Man United fans have played for Leeds before, you know, and I'm sure they will again in the future. The report states that it would be a permanent move, though, because Eric Ten Hag needs to raise funds in order to put together a 50 million package to sign Amrabat from Fiorentina. Um, but the talks are ongoing. There was a long conversation between Brandon Williams and Daniel Farke after the friendly in Oslo recently. I think I put that out on Twitter. It was a very long conversation between the two. And it looked like there could be a situation there. Left back is still a situation Leeds need to tie down. What they're going to do with Sam Byram is another question. Is Fredbo going to leave? If Fredbo does leave, and if they bring in Williams, having Sam Byram there as a backup option is also important to have as well. You've also got Leo Hjelda there as well. So there are options there. Leeds need to find the best one to get the best team on the pitch to get promoted. So we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But um, could be seen as a, a replacement. He has, as I said, 26 games for Norwich, but has 21 first team appearances for Manchester United as well as a goal for them as well. So um, hasn't made the breakthrough there, but there's, there's tough options ahead of him. So could be a good player for Leeds to sign. Uh, moving on, let's talk about another exit potential and Jorginho Ruter again. Loan interest on the player has resurfaced from Germany with Hoffenheim and Freiburg both said to be interested in the player. Uh, a report coming from Kicker in Germany states that before Ruter joined Leeds, he had a verbal agreement with, with Leeds around a possible loan exit should he be able to find a club that could cover 100% of his wages and that is what's being discussed here. However, it does state that it was a verbal agreement with Victor Orta, and with Orta now gone from the club, it might be harder to put into action. They, they, they also said this deal is very similar to what Robin Cock had as well, but it appears that Robin Cock had a more structured, formal loan release in his contract, where this is a, a verbal agreement, which might not be honoured by anybody. Um, it also goes on to state that um, Hoffenheim may be look at a permanent move for the player as well as they've struggled to bring in creative attacking players since Rutgers left and maybe some sort of a structured deal to swap them back to Hoffenheim for the fee that Leeds paid for him, but unlikely. But anyway, that's the story with that one. We keep an eye on what's going on with Jorginho Rutter as well. And um, also moving on then, let's talk about a player who's had a really good preseason for Leeds, and that's Ian Pavated. Baron Cross has another fantastic opinion piece uh, with some great quotes from Daniel Frack and Liam Cooper about Ian Pavated in Leeds Live yesterday. And the piece covers basically uh, Pavada's need to find consistency and to find a home within Leeds uh, as a club. 
He had two loan spells in the last couple of years, Blackburn Rovers and Blackpool as well. Blackburn didn't work out as well. Tony Moby were very high on the player, did like him an awful lot, but he, he tore his ACL and ended up being out for the bulk of the season, which is unfortunate for the player. At Blackpool, he played quite consistently for them, although he did um, struggle a little bit uh, with off-the-field issues with Mick McCarthy and a couple of other managers that... that could be, as is labelled here, slightly misunderstood the kind of person that he is. Uh, Daniel Farker was talking about the player, and this is what he's had to say. It's difficult, and it's not just after one or two good friendlies that were dancing on tables because of his performances. He has to keep going, and he has to keep working unbelievably hard. Uh, Liam Cooper has also commented on Ian Bivada's situation as well, and what he has said is the following. He's been different class. He's had a tough, and he'll tell you himself that he's had a tough. He can be a bit misunderstood at times being a young lad and the way that he carries himself. Cooper went on to finish the quote by saying he's a credit to himself and he seems to have turned a corner and he's got to keep improving now. It's about consistency. He's not a young lad anymore. He's been probably one of the most creative players Leeds have seen in preseason so far. It is only preseason though and it should be you know, important to temper expectations on the player. But in terms of the passing range that he has and his ability to go at a player one-on-one, Leeds are kind of limited. I think he's a perfect number 10 for Leeds, but time will tell over the season. I really, really, really hope it works out for Ian Pavetta at Leeds this season. I really, really do. I'd like to see the kid catch a break and I'd like to see us actually get the potential that's there turned into reality. So fingers crossed for Pavetta for the upcoming season. We'll see what happens on Sunday against Cardiff. Um, and impossible, another possible incoming. This one's been floating around for a while, but has popped its head back up again. It's Grady Diagana. And according to Football League World, they said that Leeds have joined Burnley and Leicester in the hunt to try and sign the West Brom winger. Uh, Diagana is a seven million pound fee attached to him, and the report says that Leeds, West Brom, sorry, Leeds, Burnley, and Leicester are looking at the West Brom player. However, it does the Steve Express is also claiming that there is ex outside interest from Saudi Arabia. Diagana's best time at West Brom was had during their promotion campaign. It hasn't really been great for him since then. He hasn't found the same form. He played, uh, West Brom paid a lot of money for him, but West Brom are now looking to bring in money in a situation where they need to buy some players. And one of the few players that they have that is still carrying any kind of a fee is Diagana. It will be a cash upfront deal if it can be done, but it's unlikely for me. I think it's unlikely Leeds bring in another winger unless Nanto goes or unless Somerville goes or Sinistera goes. I think it's unlikely Leeds move for another winger unless that happens. And, and then very finally today, just to finish off some great news today, fantastic to see this yesterday. As everyone already knows, Charlie Creswell has signed a new deal at Leeds United. Creswell has signed a four-year contract at, at Elland Road um, and will take on the new number five shirt for the, the, the new season, a shirt worn by Robin Cock and hopefully more likely in that shirt than there was before, which I would imagine there is. Uh, Creswell spoke about uh, growing up in York and everyone he, know, he knew being Leeds United fans and this is all it has been and it's been his dream to play for Leeds United and represent Leeds United getting the number five shirt is massive I think he's the future Leeds captain in the man I hope there is um, and I think a, mass, a massive season is ahead for him at Leeds United I think you're looking at young player of the year there if all goes well or potentially even better um, I love Creswell I think he's a cracking player he had a, he had a Great loan spell in terms of having to fight last season at Millwall to fix things. It to really developed the guy. He's already talked about coming back a different person than he went away. A different player, sorry, than he went away with the same person. So it's great for him. It's great to see it. The uh, squad number should be confirmed this week. They're, they're still warning people not to personalise shirts just in case, but they should be confirmed this week. Not sure what they're waiting on at the moment, but um, we have to wait and see. Um, and that's going to be it for today, folks. Thanks very much uh, for joining me. Uh, more information on the deal with Tufts. It's not a paid promotion. It's literally just a an, an opportunity to give everyone who watches this channel a discount to buy shirts from Tufts as well. So we'll um, have more detail on that tomorrow in tomorrow's Leeds News. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.